Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi. I can't see you, Rachel. Well, you're on. Okay. <laughs> We're on. It's happening. Oh no, Vivian Hi. got on too. <laughs> Hi, Vivian. Hi, Kenesha. And chat. Oh, can you see the chat at all? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. Can y'all tell we're newbies at this? Well, I if you can tell we're newbies at this, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> and is the volume and all that stuff okay? Yeah, that too. <laughs> I know, do we just sit in silence? <laughs> this is fun. We should do this a lot. Just sit here and see how many people get on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Annette, you're like frozen. <laughs> okay. Can everyone else see Annette or is she just frozen for me? Wyatt, can you see her or is she frozen? Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get her back. Hold on. For me, it froze. It froze on you. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Weird. Um, okay. <laughs> Am I back? Yes. Uh, okay. I had you frozen like this. And so I didn't I, know I, if you were doing a funny pose or... <laughs> Wyatt, rest in peace. Um, Is it working, Wyatt? Yeah, I can't see you, so. But it's working now. Okay, well. Can can you okay, hear me? Wyatt said, okay, so for, for those that don't know, I have my 17-year-old son trying to help us with technology. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But um, we could go ahead and get started if you want after all of that. Yeah, hopefully I don't disappear again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I am super, super nervous. I just have to tell everybody that so, so that I can get over it. So I do think that we should take a collective poll of like, um, give a thumbs up if you've read all the chapters that we had kind of suggested this week so we can get an idea. And it's totally fine if you haven't read that, that far or haven't even started or whatever. I'm yeah, we're not going to kick you out of our book club. <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to kick you out of a lie. So there's that. <laughs> you got that going for you. <laughs> so, um, Raven, are you, did you finish it? I did. I accidentally okay. read ahead, actually. Book club mistake number one. Reading oh, ahead? No. I don't know. Have you ever been in a book club where you only read certain chapters? No. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't follow rules really very well. I know. Well, I thought it was, I don't know. I guess maybe we, so the whole reason for the chapters was just to make it seem like it was um, doable, you know? Yeah. Breaking it down instead of just saying, here, read this entire book, figure it out, and then we'll come back at the end of the month and talk about it. Because it is a yeah. rather large book. It is. Look, I have mine here, which I Ooh. think mine looks smaller than yours, but. Yes, mine <laughs> It's the biggest book ever, and I'm not sure. It, but it's very, like, compact. So, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and and so, wait, we should do another emoji to say, like, what. Um, <laughs> yes, Casey, I can see you. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter is getting dropped off, and I know they're listening. So, um, did has everybody enjoyed the book so far? Have you enjoyed it, Raven? Yeah, so actually I texted Rachel early on and I was like, what is happening in this book? Because I, I just don't even know what's happening. Um, and Dickens is really hard for me to read. So if it's hard, just know that you're, you know, we're the same. Yes. <laughs> like it, it's a harder read for me, um, but I like the challenge. But I'm enjoying it. I got to about chapter... I don't know, 11 or 12. And 
I felt like it kind of picked up and yeah, it's interesting. So I am enjoying it so far. Yeah. I think once you kind of get past that, um, the first couple of chapters are like establishing something that's going to come into play later. Um, but you kind of have to establish that. So, um, okay. So I found some nerdy things to add to, um, Oh, wait, we have a comment. Jackie is loving it. (laughs) The major cliffhanger. Yes, we'll get there, Jackie. We'll get there. (laughs) So, um, so have you ever heard of the term Bill, Bill Dung's, Bill Dung's Roman, I think is how you say the total word, but it's B-I-L-D-U-N-G-S-R-O-M-A-N. And it is, it's a literary genre that means that you follow the same protagonist all the way through their life. So you watch them grow. Okay. Jane Eyre is a Bill Dung's Roman. I think it's how you pronounce it. Okay. That's interesting. (laughs) But I had never heard of that word. So anyways, okay. So, um. Well, I'm going to look it up later. Yeah. Well, I, I will, I can maybe have Wyatt type it in the chat or something. And that's, you can actually see how it's spelled. But, um, so one of the interesting things about Dickens is pretty, pretty much most of his books are published, were published originally in a, um, like novel type magazine. So they would just, um, put out little snippets every week so that you had to come back and read, um, more like you had to come back and buy more paper right so that you could keep going with the story kind of like a soap opera nowadays um and so that's why there's so many like cliffhangers at the end of a grouping of chapters because that would be what was in the paper so i thought that was interesting i think that's interesting when you told me that i thought i think you told me this a while back um about about him and how he how he how his books came to be yeah so um tale of two cities um and and this i think most of his novels i don't think a christmas carol i think a christmas carol was put out all together so i don't think um that one was it's called a serialized novel so and then i am very impressed with (laughs) the vocabulary that you're bringing to the table today you're welcome you're welcome so um, but a serialized novel is just, you have several. So this one actually, he published this in 36 weekly installments. So it took wow. people quite a while to figure out or to get to the end. And apparently it was very controversial in its day. And people would like argue about what was going to happen when they were reading it. So fun times. Yeah. And I did find out too, sorry, I'm super nerdy trained that, um, when they actually, so they put it out in the paper and then they waited like 18 months after all of the papers went out and the story was concluded in the magazine. And then they compiled them all together to put it in a novel, but they actually took, um, some of the parts out to make it, um, flow better. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Like, what else did he, like, what got taken out? I do not even know. Because um, it's a long book to begin with. Yeah. That would so. be really interesting to find out. Yeah. I guess I could, I guess I could have asked the the family member. <laughs> oh, you could have. Uh, because y'all went. <laughs> right? Yeah. His kids just got to play music for his Charles Dickens descendants. Yeah, they got to actually, they actually got to talk to him and meet him. Like, he was super friendly. Um, yeah. And their whole, like, the whole family was. Um, it was there. Yeah. I was kind of jealous. I mean, that would be pretty awesome to be like, I'm related to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Total brag. Um, yeah. Okay, and then some other, I'm just going to lay out a whole bunch of fun facts that I found out because I think they pertain to how you could view the story going forward. So, Um, Dickens himself enjoyed like crime and mystery novels and he also liked fairy tales. And so when you're reading this book, I feel like this book in particular, you can really see the, um, like the mystery elements, the crime elements. Um, as we go through the book, you can kind of see the fairy tale element of like 
um, somebody getting pulled out of their circumstance and um, like that kind of progression, you know what I mean? Right. So um, it's interesting though that he really liked the like cheap, they were called, um, like the name Penny Dreadful actually comes from these stories because they were pennies. And so you would buy this like little pamphlet for a penny and then read this scary story or crime story or whatever. And apparently he really liked those. Which I think is funny for somebody who's like so classical, you know, their books are considered so classical. Yeah. He dabbled in maybe the, the, um, how should we say less highbrow <laughs> reading? You know what I mean? So, yeah. I and think he's already um, been a really interesting person to me, honestly. Like, I don't know. I feel like he, I don't know, the way he writes, he would have been a really interesting person to have a conversation with. Yeah. Well, I was, telling, I was telling Jackie this, too. Um, I think his humor is so funny, and he must have been a very interesting character, like, in real life. Because his yeah. humor, like, I bet he just made fun of people, and they didn't even know it. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, another interesting fact that I found out is that he actually, he would have like a vague plot line of his stories, but when he was writing them and he would, so since he was putting it out weekly, he would actually wait and see how readers like responded. And if they really, really liked this certain character, he would add more of that character. Or if people were crazy about this plot line, he would add more of that plot line. But in reverse, if people didn't like people or were like irritated with plot lines, he would pull those out and kind of like let it drop off a little bit. And I just can't even imagine that because there would have been so much, I don't know, like so many people's opinions affecting the story. I think it's yeah. in one way, it's kind of cool. But in the other, in another way, I'm like, don't mess with my story. I don't care right. what y'all think. <laughs> I know. I don't know anybody which I don't know anybody that puts out stories like this anymore, like weekly, I guess comic book people, but I don't even know that they necessarily take the reader's opinion. Yeah. In mind. I don't know. So, and then the other thing that I kind of wanted to point out just as we're going through this book, um, <laughs> is that um, Dickens likes to use the different settings to, um, indicate like the tone of the situation. So if you've noticed, um, it'll be like rainy and stormy and that's when kind of like crazy stuff is happening. Or um, when he goes walking, you know, in the, the marsh and there's mist and whatever, he's normally alone when he does that. And so it's kind of like that, trying to make you feel like an isolated feeling. So um, really pay attention as we like move through the story when he's doing that because, um, He's try like he's like winking at you that this situation is going to be this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I yeah, and you use that term a lot with Dickens that he's there's a that's a, that's a wink. Yes. Oh, there's totally. And I do want to say too that when you're reading this book, especially if this is your first time through, which this is only my second time. It's not like I'm like professional or anything. But, She's a pro. But when you're reading it the first time through, I really would just be trying to read for the story. Yeah. Like you don't want to read and, and feel like I have to take in all of this like extra underlying stuff. Like right. you can just read it and enjoy the story and it's a really good story and that's enough. You know what I mean? So you don't have to feel like, oh, let me understand all of the allegory and all of that kind of stuff. Like you, you can just read it and it's fine. If you want yeah. to go back and read it like Raven, then you can find all of the fun you know, nuggets under there. I think this is a good book, though, to pick up on stuff without having to really go digging too far. Like yeah. a, and I think he does that pretty well. Um, I mean, people spend their lives researching him and, like, his stories and stuff like that because there is so much there. But you can also just glean, you know. I mean, he was putting these stories out in these weekly papers so that average people would read them. So, yeah. anyway. Very okay. fascinating. So, um, let's see. The two, the two, my two biggest, like, hey, you should pay attention to this, is um, you need to remember the convict. 
that you meet in the beginning that seems very irrelevant after the beginning. <laughs> um, but he was actually important. And um, as we're going along, like I said, the there's like little mysteries along the way. Um, so it's like lots of stories inside stories because of how he wrote the book weekly kind of thing. So you can kind of keep track as you're going um, different mysteries and stuff that get solved along the way. Yeah. So that's, yeah. those are all of my plugs as to why, which I didn't really do a good job, but why you should keep going and reading, read it. So are you going to keep going? <laughs> I'm going to keep going, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> so it does totally, we stopped on chapter 15 and I just, like, I just did the math of like, there's so many chapters, there's so many weeks and just like cut it up like that. Um, but I think it was kind of funny because chapter 15 does end on a cliffhanger. Which is why I kept going, <laughs> but I won't, I won't talk about that. Sorry, Jackie. I already know what so, happens to still. Yeah. So what... So, okay, so Raven, what did you think of the whole first chunk so far? So I feel like there's a theme. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's kind of obvious, like he's yeah. discontented with his life and that he's probably going to have to go through some stuff in <laughs> order to learn to be con content in, in his um, situation. So... That's that's kind of like my overall thought. I did have a quote, but I read it and like, I don't know, it didn't, I don't know if it makes sense what I was thinking, but, but um, <clears throat> let me see here. Make sure I'm not a chapter head here reading. <laughs> um, but he was talking about like Joe, he was, he was sharing, I think his discontentment with Joe um, okay, I'm not going to try to find it. Um, and Joe was like basically telling him, don't, you know, I'm a take criticism or like, um, I'm, I'm not as articulate as, uh, Rachel, but take criticism from a true friend. And I don't know that little piece, he didn't say criticism. He said something else, but like trust a true friend that is going to tell you what is true and um i don't know i really like that and i think i think so far i really like joe a lot yeah. um i feel like he's going to be a character that i am attached to yeah so did you slightly cringe when he goes with pip and miss havisham is like trying to talk to him and he's like talking to pip instead of like that whole scene is so like <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I like it. Pip is annoying me just because yeah. I'm like, why are you, I don't know, why are you being so, I don't know, why are you so discontented? But then I, you know, we're all like that, right? Like we're all like uh, want, wanting something better all the time. So yes, it's, it's almost like how when we read the Old Testament and the Israelites are so super annoying because they keep doing the bad things. It is oh, together. Yes. <laughs> yes. But we are the Israelites. Um, yeah, for sure. And I, so what did you think of Miss Havisham? I think she's creepy. <laughs> she's weird. And then the way she's like, y'all play together and I'm going to watch. I like, was like, what are we playing? <laughs> I don't are we know. playing trains? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. I don't know. She's a very, I mean, yeah, she's a very weird lady. But the whole, so, so I think I've said it in a podcast before, but I read this in eighth grade. And um, I remember at the end of us reading the book, we had a like Miss Havisham party. And so we had like all this gross looking food. <laughs> It was like food that was made to look gross, but like like her wedding cake and this kind of stuff, it was very weird and odd, but funny. And I remember it to this day. So uh, I guess we'll have to have a book club dinner. Yeah. <laughs> With cobwebs and stuff. Gross. So, Jackie said, I had Mr. Collins vibe when Joe went to the Havishams. Yeah. I, um, 
that was definitely cringy. So, mm -hmm. okay. So you brought it up just randomly, but like the great expectations, like the, um, the title of the book, um, you can already see it playing out in the way Peter yeah. is going about his life now, because we've already seen him at the very beginning. He's super content. He doesn't know that he wants anything different. Yeah. Um, until he gets a taste of <laughs> the other side and how maybe his life could be right um, better in this other kind of way. So how do you like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, like as far as where I think it's going. Yeah. Or, um, I think he's going to go through a lot of stuff <laughs> and then he's going to learn <laughs> To be content yeah. and be happy and realize what he has and um, learn to appreciate that. Yeah. So that's what I think. Am I right? It's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry. My tech support's like waving at me. Um, oh. Yeah. Well, he could not learn his lesson. Well, that's true. And, yeah. And it just end up miserable for him. So but I don't think Dickens usually has redeeming characters, though. Yes, but not every character will be redeemed is his like, oh, yeah. token yeah. thing. Somebody will get happy ending, but not everybody. Right. And a lot of people might not get really good endings. So, um, so Jackie said, godlessness with contempt is of great value. I am Pip and need this lesson, too. Yes. So as much as Pip is annoying, I think we all are kind of like Pip and wanting, especially in nowadays, in our current world, we're always wanting the next best thing or to have the bigger house or to have the nice car. Um, right. And we really think that that's going to bring contentment and like, well, if I just had that, then everything would be okay. Um, and so we're going to learn over and over and over again going through this book that once he gets to, like, the next step, like, does it work out for him? Does it bring all the things that he thinks it's going to bring? Probably not. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, so the cliffhanger in Chapter uh, 15, so spoiler if you haven't gotten there yet, is that he comes home to find that his sister has been attacked by somebody. Yeah. Does anyone yeah. else find it really strange that he calls her Mrs. Joe and her husband's <laughs> name is Joe? But is it surprising? No, I think it no, just adds but it's so just, much to her character. <laughs> it's just, I'm like really having to pay attention. Of, do like, do what, we... Do they ever say what her name is? Like, I don't know that they ever say her first name. I have no idea. Oh, wait. Somebody will have to put in a comment. Do they ever say her first name? No, my <laughs> sister. Jackie wants to know, but did she die? <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep going, Jackie. You have to keep going. I think <laughs> they just call her my, my sister, Mrs. Joe Gardery. Or it... Okay. I don't yeah. know that they ever say her actual name. And then, so I was in doing like research for um, making sure I didn't sound like an idiot when we got on here. Um, you I never sound this, like an idiot, Rachel. <laughs> I found this one guy that brought up a really good point of this quote. And so it's on the very first page of chapter one, like the second paragraph. And it says, um, so this is Pip and he's at the grave of his parents. And he says, I never saw my father or my mother and never saw any likeness of either of them for this was long before photographs. My first fancies regarding what they were like were unreasonably uh, derived from their tombstones. The shape of the letters on my father's grave gave me an, an odd idea that he was a square, stout, dark man with curly black hair. From the, ch from the character and turn of the inscription, also Georgina, a wife of the above, I drew a childish conclusion that my mother was freckled and sickly. So he made this point of like right away you find out or you're like being told just how much conclusion Pip draws from little nuggets of nothing. <laughs> yeah. And kind of like builds this whole story in his head out of like letters on a tombstone that say nothing about them. 
And so I thought that was a really good point because, yeah, like I said, we're going to watch him over and over again, um, maybe jump to some, some conclusions that maybe aren't right. <laughs> it is true. Okay, so mm -hmm. what did you think of Estella? Okay, don't judge me. But oh <laughs> listen, there's so many people, and so listen. I'm just trying to be okay. relatable to people. <laughs> okay, Estella this is. This book is hard Mrs. for me. Mrs. Havisham's. Estella is oh, Mrs. Havisham's okay. adopted daughter person. Well, I think she's kind of stuck up right now. Yeah. Like in her own high society. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of don't like how she talks to Pip, and I'm also like, what's Pip's problem? Why is he so infatuated with this person? Yeah. Um, but yeah. But also, why is she living with a crazy person? <laughs> well, that might be not by choice. Like, if I don't yeah. know we've gotten to her backstory, right, of how she got to Miss Havisham's. I don't think we've gotten there yet. No, no. I do I, think at least eventually, I do think eventually we learn okay. um, how she came about to be at Miss Havisham's, but it, I definitely wonder, like, um, just to see Miss Havisham interact with Pip and her and Estella, like, I wonder how, what she's telling Estella when, when Pip's not around. Because yeah. I don't know if somebody, I don't think... And I can't remember how old they are. Uh, it, I mean, it's in the beginning, right? Where they're like still young kids and she's not nice to him. I mean, most kids have to be trained to act that way. You're not born to just be mean to people. Right. So it really makes you wonder what, what kind of person is she, you know, building up with Estella and, and kind of influencing how she acts. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I mean, you can tell she's a very bitter person for how, like, how her life played out, not the way she wanted it to. So I really think she's probably like a man hater. <laughs> and that's totally, possible. Yeah. And totally like, you know, trying to manipulate, well, manipulating both of them. I mean, you can already see that, but, but for sure, trying to use, Estella as a weapon already and she's just a child yeah yeah I would say that's pretty abusive <laughs> oh for sure <laughs> childhood upbringing so who knows yeah. how that's gonna turn out that one yeah well okay. you know well I know vaguely I'm reading it like because it's been so long I was like ooh, I don't I didn't quite remember all of this um, okay, Jackie said, I can't tell if they actually like Pip or are they just messing with him? Yeah, that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. I think that we will continue in the book and find out. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I think you can kind of already see that they are playing with him. Um I, it makes me question, so if you look at her intentions from the beginning, Mrs. Havisham, why would she pick somebody who's well below Estella's station, however you want to call it, um, to come and, and have play dates with Pip? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it seems kind of wrong to begin with. Yeah. Like, so she's already messing oh. with him. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, and I do think it will become very obvious as the book progresses, her intentions. Um, but, I mean, I definitely think it's not warm and fuzzy from the beginning. So. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't feel Dickens. Dickens isn't warm and fuzzy from the beginning on any of his. Is he? I don't know that he gets ever warm and fuzzy. But <laughs> um, things work out in the way. So, have you, like... Have you thought it was funny? Like, have there been times that you thought it was funny? And no, because I don't understand answer. Dickens' humor like you do. I feel like you understand, like you get it, but you've read a lot more. You know, it's like like with Jane Eyre. Like, I 
I've done it There's so many no times. There's no humor in Jane Eyre. There's no humor. <laughs> There's dark humor. No, just kidding. There's no That's humor. Dark and bleak. <laughs> it's bleak. It's very bleak. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like you get that because you have read a lot of his work and you've read, you know, you've read more than more than a few of his books and you've read reread. Am I correct? You've reread some of his stuff. Um, yeah. Now, now I've reread. I've reread *A Tale of Two Cities*, and then this is my only other reread. Yeah. So I feel like when you reread something, like you start picking up on the author's yeah. little, their little winks and their little, you know, funny things that they just kind of throw in there. Um, so I do feel like you're a professional Dickens reader. <laughs> That's very sweet. I'll get a pipe for next time um, <laughs> and like a whole chair and, and have a thing. But I will say that if you pay attention to, um, especially when he's talking, um, you, you can tell the characters that he doesn't really like because I think he goes out of his way to make them look stupid. So like um, Mrs. Joe, like there's always things that she says and does that are just dumb. And um uh, and I think that that's him poking fun at her. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, Jackie said, yes, the headbutt to the stomach from the young man who wanted to fight. Yeah. Are you saying that that's like some humor? Yes. Yeah. I think that's what she's talking about. Yeah. So like little, it's not going to be a joke. It's going to be like right. situations. Yeah. yeah. That are just comical, like stupid comical. Um, and sometimes characters, I think he, he makes some characters just to be ridiculous, I think. Yeah. So that you can laugh at them. And then like another thing to, to keep in mind too, when you're reading is that he, so he grew up, you know, it's a fabulous time to watch the man who invented Christmas because it's about him writing. It's about him writing a Christmas carol, but it actually shows some of his growing up. And he had to go work at a, I think it was like a boot painting factory or something because his dad went to debtor's prison, like very bleak. Um, so he kind of grew up in that world of not having a lot, having to really, really work hard, um, not having super reliable, trusty parents. You can definitely see all of that in all of his stories. And he really writes characters, um, of the like downtrodden and the people that that books were not being written about back in that time period. Yeah, that's interesting. I need to watch that movie again. It's been a while. Everyone needs to watch that movie. <laughs> I really, really think it's good. And if you don't, even if you don't like a Christmas Carol, it, it has the characters of it, but it's more about him and his writing process of that book, um, which I just think is fascinating. So. I did enjoy that part of that movie, it, just like his writing process and how, I don't know, they made that part, they did that part really well, making that come alive for someone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jackie said life was hard then. Um, Casey, go watch it. <laughs> you need to watch it, Casey. I'm um, sure she said it a million times to you, too. <laughs> Probably. It's definitely like one of my top favorite Christmas movies. And the guy that, that plays um, Dickens is um, Dan Stevens, I think is his name. And it's just, he does it so well. Like oh, he's, he's from, um, he's from Downton, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the one that sadly left. <laughs> we don't know. talk about that. But um, he is such a good actor. And he, he just really does is. it so well, like when they're trying to come up with the names of the characters and he's like acting it out. Like, it's really, really good. Um, so I highly recommend watching that. And that will give you kind of a backstory and kind of make you feel like maybe you know him a little bit better. And you can understand his writing a little bit better because you kind of know him. Um, yes, my son said it was good. <laughs> yes, Matthew Crawley. Jackie, we don't talk about it. No, we don't talk about, about Matthew. <laughs> Oh, on down. Um, I think I think I have a child here. Oh, okay. So yeah, real life. That's why Raven's in the car. 
that's why I'm in the car. Happens. So we can wrap it up. I don't think that there's any more to cover unless you want to talk about something. I'm distracted now. <laughs> Do you have any other things you want to say about um, the chapters that we, we read this week? No, I would just say keep going with it because it does hi Ethan. <laughs> uh, keep going with it because I I even though they're hard, like this book is hard um for me to read and get into, um, I always find it worth it when I get to the end of it. So For sure. Definitely Huh? This one will definitely be worth it. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> Everyone keep going. Yay for reading. Yay for reading. <laughs> okay. Thanks for getting on, everybody. Hopefully next right. week will be smoother and better. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, guys.